Okay, everybody, hello and welcome. This is object oriented programming in C. <clears throat> so, hopefully, you found the right room. There's confusions because there's nobody at the front desk <laughs> as to where people are going. Um, so, what I'm going to do is uh, just start out with an introduction to the course, tell you what it's about, what we're going to cover, where to find the materials. I do see some new faces, so I know we have some new students in here. <clears throat> so, some of the Current students, you just have to bear with me for this first uh, 45 minutes or so of overview because uh, you m probably know most of this. I run all my classes the same way. Uh, but for brand new people, this will be very informative, I hope, for you. Um, what you're looking at on the screen is the website that I use. It's www.bhecker.com. Not on the ITU website. It's a separate website, so you have to write that down. You're not going to get the link anywhere else. Um, in here, I put all of the source code examples, lectures, and everything that you need for the course. It's used as a kind of secondary delivery system for the materials. If you click on Summer 2013, you'll see down here it says Object Oriented Programming in C++ with C++. And you see that today is uh, May 25th, and that's the first day. And then you see there's second weekend, the 23rd, 20. 22nd, 23rd of June, and then August 24th, 25th is a three weekend course. We do run from 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock at night on both days. Uh, today we have a barbecue, however, from 12 to 2. So we'll have an extra long lunch so we can celebrate the barbecue. Because it's Memorial Day weekend, and, we're supposed, and you guys are in America, and Americans barbecue. So we'll, if you don't like meat, don't worry about it. <coughs> Last time they did this, they had veggie burgers. So. And I don't know, maybe they'll have chips or something else. Uh, sodas, they have free sodas too. So at least get yourself a free soda or something like that at lunchtime. Um, and I'm sure someone will come in here and bug me to let my class out at noon. So we will definitely get out at noon and we'll run from 2 o'clock approximately because some people, you know, just to absorb the, bar absorb the Memorial Day barbecue. So we'll have a 12 to 2 break. So um, if you click on the... Uh, object-oriented program, uh, object programming in, with C++ link takes you to this page here. All of this information is also in the LMS for the course. If I go into the, the or EMS if we want to call it that, if I type in for brand new people ems.itu.edu, you'll see in the uh, EMS, which is ITU system, if you look under the courses, um, Tia, could you do me a favor? Could you shut that door? Because already people are talking in the hallway. Um, and I don't feel like yelling for the entire 16-hour weekend. <laughs> so <laughs> if you click on Object-Oriented Programming with C++, you'll see, hopefully, if this works. Um, here we go. My interface looks a little different than yours. However, you'll see the lessons that are already posted in here. You know, these are all the lectures. It's the same material. However, this, um, I think, is a little slower to access, probably easier to get it from bhacker.com. The only thing you have to remember is that you can't submit anything to bhacker.com. All your assignments get submitted to this system. So when you complete one of the assignments, I'll talk about them in a few minutes, you upload them to the EMS. You can't upload them to bhacker. Um, but you'll find in here the course is already populated. Uh, there's uh, Several things in here. One of them is a book, a link to a book. You don't necessarily need the book, but if you're looking for a good book, I'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. So what I'd like to do is cover this course syllabus, which is right here. So which all you do is click on the download the materials in here, and you'll see if you as you go through at the bottom, it says previous materials in the bottom of the link. You'll see that there is um, pre-recorded video lectures from, well, this is from summer, uh, let's see, video lectures, here we go, from, uh, this is the last time I taught it, which was in uh, summer 2011, <clears throat> and uh, actually, if you click on one of these videos, just to show you for brand new people, it takes you to a YouTube website, this particular class has been taught about three times, I believe. Yep, ready, set, Oops. lights, camera. Yep, there we go. <laughs> about three times so far at ITU, and each one of the courses has been um, recorded. So you can find uh, about three different versions of this class. Each one's a slightly different in interpretation or it's a delivery of the material. Um, I'm not that much of a robot, although I seem like one occasionally. Um, it's different because it's live and it's just on the fly kind of recording. 
Um, but you might find something in here um, that's uh, of use. You can also go through some of the other lectures on there as well. So um, today's lectures and tomorrow's, actually all the lectures for this class will also be recorded. Um, it's being recorded right now, actually. And then uh, I will be at the breaks or at the end of each day uploading them into here. So you'll have links that will be um, off of the main here. It's not there yet, but after I record it, it'll be right under here. You'll see. Um, so, if you let's say, for example, you know, well, these you guys showed up, but let's say, for example, somebody in here didn't show up and they're missing this valuable information about the course, uh, no problem. They can always just watch the video later. <laughs> so, uh, which means, um, you know, if you miss a day or something, um, or you come back late from lunch because you're enjoying the barbecue or something, and I don't know, the barbecue would be over with by the time you come back. But, long story short, um, you don't have to worry about missing anything. You can relive the past over and over and over again as much as you'd like. So, um, <clears throat> But then again, you do have to attend the course. So let's talk about that. So what I've done is I've downloaded and now what you're looking at is the syllabus. So I want to go over what I'm going to cover in the course so you have an idea um, a lot, as well as the assignments and stuff like that and how the course is going to be run. So I made this a little bit bigger. Um, all right, so you're in object-oriented programming with C++, <coughs> and uh, it's hard to teach you C++ without teaching you C, and I get a lot of students in this class who don't have any programming experience, so I'm going to assume you've never programmed before. Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to go down, down that low. I'm going to go past computer science 101, computer science 102 kind of level, and go into, I am familiar with the concept of programming. You might know about variables, you might know about memory, you might have little bits and pieces, so it's a little bit higher because this is a graduate level course. I need to, I need to get into object-oriented programming eventually. So today is going to be a lot of C programming, but we will do classes by the end of the day. So we'll, we'll be hitting uh, how to create classes and use classes. And I'm going to demonstrate, you might be noticing I'm using a, a MacBook. I have a Windows partition on here. In fact, uh, here it is uh, here. It is uh, sleeping right now, uh, but this is a Windows uh, Virtual Desktop uh, XP. Uh, so XP is compatible with 7, compatible with a lot of other things. Um, so you can also use Xcode if you're on a MacBook. So don't worry about your computer resources. I have um, will be demonstrating to you using a compiler called Bloodshed, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, works great on 7. It works great on XP. Not so good on 8. If you're working with Windows 8, you're probably going to want to use a program called CodeBlocks or another compiler. In a few minutes, I'm going to go through all the compiler stuff, so don't worry about that. But for in terms of what you need by resources, there's no need to have a MacBook. You can use any computer you want for this course. If you're going to get into Objective C, which is a dialect of C as well, then you're going to want a MacBook for that. But uh, long story short, you don't need it for this class. So. I see some people from my Objective C course, though, so you're you're already set because you already got C plus plus on there as well. So, all right. So, uh, <coughs> a prior exposure to C is helpful, but not required as basic concepts of C programming will be discussed today. But you're going to get an entire course in C this morning or this afternoon, so um, it'll be way accelerated. So, if you're brand new to computer science in general, not a technical person at all, you're going to find this course challenging. If you um, do have a technical background of taking a, you know, taking a, a programming course or a computer science related course in the past, not adverse to learning quickly, then uh, this class will be just perfect for you. So uh, you can go through all of the different uh, learning objectives. What we're going to cover is the object oriented part. Not so much today, but starting in with tomorrow, talking about object orientation and things of that nature. Um, so. What is that going to do? We're going to look at classes versus the function, methods of classes, inheriting one class from another, abstract classes, pure abstract as a concept, uh, multiple inheritance, uh, interfacing, which is kind of interesting in uh, C++ because we don't have a real interface like we do in Java, um, and um, building uh, programs building applications using classes and modeling uh, the model view controller in terms of the design of the application. And uh, it's pretty much uh, everything you ever wanted to know about object orientation as well, including you know abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, encapsulation, um, and 
basically uh, how to design a proper object-oriented program as well. Um, so it's really broad, and uh, you'll find something <coughs> interesting, even if you've taken a C course before. Um, you'll find you'll definitely find something of value. Um, and here there's a, it says required, not really required, but this is the book that's also listed in the uh, EMS. And this book here gets into, I believe that's where I've got here, the Dead Worms book, yeah. Um, it's a nice book if you're looking for a book. There's another book that you might find a little bit even more helpful. It's by Deedle and Deedle. Let me look that up real quick for you. Uh, this one here, you don't need a book for this course. You can do everything based on my lectures. And, and if you're attending the class, you're in perfect shape. If you're not going to attend the course uh, or you're not going to listen to me while you're attending the course, you're just going to zone out and do other work. Uh, you're probably going to need a book because you're going to have to learn the material somehow. If you're going to take that approach, then I recommend this book here, Deedle and Deedle. But we don't want we want C++. So let's go see C++ how to program. He's got about uh, oh I don't know about twelve or probably ten or twelve different versions of this book. He also makes one for Java, which um, I like as well. I like his books because they're very much tutorial driven. You'll notice that this is like the ninth edition or so, and it's $112. Well, you can go back. C++ has not changed in the last century. <laughs> the language is the language. You can go back to, let's say, the fourth edition, the fifth edition, and probably get it for free. At a, you know, or maybe pay about 10 or 15 bucks for a third edition or fourth edition, fifth edition. Go on to Amazon.com. Look up old versions of it. In fact... When I did the search, I found here, here's a, here's a fourth edition of the book. Um, hope it's actually not going to be here. If you can find an old version of the book, you can get it for like a third of the price. You probably could find an e-version of the book as well. Uh, there's a ton of PDFs. In fact, some of the PDFs for this are free. They're not pirated. It's not copyright infringement or anything like that. He distributes the older versions for free. Don't have the links for it. You have to sort of look for it on your own. Uh, but there's no excuse if you want a book. This is the one I recommend. Again, that's D E I T E L and D E I T E L. Deal. This father and son combination. They uh, they write uh, books on almost everything. Really good combo, actually. Um, so it's 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 nice because it's in plain English. It's not cryptic. It's not like your traditional academic book either. So it's a lot of. He's very straightforward, just says it how it is, and shows you like a lot of good examples and stuff like that. So. Anyway, that's the book. Uh, let's see what else we need to do here. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the grading. Um, okay, so for those of you people who are interested in getting a good grade for this course, you'll be happy to know it's, it's probably likely if you attend the course that you'll actually get a good grade because um, you're be forced pretty much to do the work because we're going to be writing most of the programs in class. There's five of them and uh, here they are here. They're called homework assignments. You're going to do primarily most of it at home. However, I'm going to write most of it for you in class. So today we're probably going to write assignment number one. So if you come in with the attitude that I'm going to like just listen to her and I'm going to get everything, you're not going to have any homework. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like homework. It's, it's not a lot of work. If you're adverse to learning, you just you have to be here for attendance purposes and you're just going to show up to get marked and then you're going to leave, then you're going to struggle with the assignments because the assignments, some of them need a little bit of interpretation, some of them, um, I don't know, some of them are kind of challenging, some of them are a little bit easier. Assignment number one is pretty easy, actually, but uh, we'll be writing that today or tomorrow, depending upon how fast we go through this. Um, there will be one comprehensive final exam that will be in class during the last weekend of the course. This is a I2 CPT weekend course, so what ends up happening is we have the mandatory attendance, and then we also have the mandatory final exam that happens on Sunday, the third weekend of the class at 3 o'clock. Out of my control, it just happens at 3 o'clock. Come in, take the exam. And then you go, don't ask me to reschedule the exam, no rescheduling, nothing. You have to show up at 3 o'clock on Sunday, the last weekend of the course, to take the exam. You don't take the exam, you don't get a passing grade in the course. You don't show up for at least two of the three weekends, you don't get a passing grade in the course either. Uh, attendance is taken twice during each weekend day in the morning and then in the afternoon. You have to, and they count in terms of increments. So each day has two attendance opportunities. And I believe it's what, you can miss three of them total. 
Uh, it's still going to receive a passing grade, three of them, or four. Might be four. Don't miss four. I think the threshold is three. If you miss one morning, let's say, for example, we have six class meetings, which we do, three weekends, two weekends, two weekend days, uh, two, two opportunities, which is actually four per day, excuse me, four per weekend, because we have two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Of all of the entire course, you can miss three. So if you're not a morning person, you can show up at noon <laughs> three times and still pass the course. But you got to show up at some time during, during the day because you have to get number two. You have to get the second half of the day in there. So, or if you're not an afternoon person or you have a flight, because here's what happens. Students will have a flights. They couldn't get a flight out. To, you have to leave the class early. You know, I'm going to miss the attendance for the afternoon. Don't worry. You can do it three times. But uh, you're not going to learn anything if you're not here, but uh, you at least you'll be able to get a passing grade. If you miss more than that, there's nothing I can do either. It's just automatic failure in the course. And you have to retake the class or leave it on your transcript as an F um, or D minus or something like that. Um, there's nothing I can do to waive that either. So don't ask me about that either. Um, so if you attend the course, <laughs> there's no participation requirement, which is kind of fun. Are kind of nice. I'm not going to ask you to share your experiences with me. It's it's not it's not that kind of a business. It's not a business course. Um, so it's more of a technical course, which means I see a lot of you have laptops, and we purposely put it in a room that has power and desks and laptops. If you bring your computer with you to the class meetings, which most of you I see are doing, which is fantastic, um, then you'll be more productive. Um, only because we're going to be doing the assignments in class. I mean, so it gives you opportunity to kind of, you know, work ahead. I do occasionally get a lot of students who show up empty-handed. Great, you know, but uh, um, it's no no requirement to bring a computer, however. Uh, you're going to probably want to. Um, all right, so the final exam is 25% of the course grade. It's done in class during the last class meeting that's discussed. The midterm exam will be a take-home exam. I'm going to give it to you during the second weekend. So we're not going to get the midterm this weekend. We're going to get the midterm during the midterm. And it'll be a programming assignment of some nature. I haven't made it yet. The exam is different. The final exam will be different as well. Um, we also have this thing called a course student learning objective essay. It's a writing assignment. So you'll have to write a little bit. Because you're all graduate students, you're supposed to be learning how to write. And graduate level, technical writing. Academic writing, I should say. Um, so it'll be like a report on something. I'll give you the topics. You just write one paper, uh, use uh, reference citations, and write, you know, it's an academic paper that you're going to be putting together. And then you have these five homework assignments. Now, this is a bulk of the learning, is in the five homework assignments, five programming assignments, and there's only worth 25%. So this is where you're going to learn most of the concepts from. This is what we'll be doing in class, and you'll be finishing it up at home, stuff like that. Um, the rest of the course has got a higher point value to it, actually, but it's not quite as much learning. It's more assessment than anything else, actually. Uh, so don't be fooled. Even though it's five programming assignments and worth five points each, that's where you're going to learn most of the material you're going to need for the final exam and, uh, and also for the midterm. So the midterm will be take home, and it'll be a programming exercise of some nature. Open book, open note, everything. The final exam will not involve any programming. It'll be probably a multiple choice uh, format, or maybe a short answer where you write short lines of code, but not like a big program. Because it's closed book, closed note, closed internet, closed neighbor, done in class. So it's um, I'm really just trying to assess what you've learned, actually. Um, it's not memorizing syntax, and it's not trying to write a program. It's not a demonstration of your ability to write code. It's more uh, your ability to understand object-oriented concepts and stuff. So it definitely will be more theoretical versus uh, practical. So, but the midterm will be all practical, no theory. So, uh, Academic dishonesty it wouldn't go, and I usually say this on the first day of class, and some people who are brand new have no idea what this means, but uh, some existing IT students know that if you turn in something that matches somebody else's homework, you're pretty much going to fail the course. Uh, so don't turn in anything that you didn't do yourself. Unfortunately, about, oh, maybe about three years ago, we had a run of ITU students that came in here that had this assignment exchange program. I think it's still out there. People are still doing it. You know, towards the end of the term, you're going to get emails from students of this group 
You know, they say, hey, you got any C++ assignments? Hey, you got any Java assignments? You know, there's, I think there's even a Google group for this and stuff, and there's a bunch of websites, and there's a file exchanging going on. Some students just turn it in as is from this. You know, so how we know it's available, because they just don't even change their name on it. You know, it's like a RAR file or a zip file, and they post it up into the EMS. Here's my assignment one, here's my assignment two, here's my assignment three. And they don't even know what's inside of that zip file, because some of them don't even look at it. And some of them do look at it, you know. it's I'm talking about plagiarism, I'm talking about cheating. And some of them do look at it, and they change their name on it, but the code's the same. Long story short, there's about five or six different sample solutions for different things that have been done. And I, we, we see them all, and we really cracked down on it about, I want to say, almost a year ago at this point, where we had classes of about 70 students where maybe five of them passed and everybody else failed. And then that sent the message out that, hey, you know what, probably shouldn't do this. We don't want this to happen. It's a graduate level course. We're not supposed to be babysitting you like this. But long story short, don't do it because you never know when the big crackdown is going to happen again. And you're going to get hit. You don't have to retake a course because you failed it. So I don't think uh, the group that just graduated was part of that a series of bad students. I shouldn't say bad students. I just say dishonest students. Some of them even said, hey, you know, I thought it was okay. We've been doing it for years. And they're like, just because you've been getting away with it for years doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay. So there's no cheating allowed or tolerated. Um, at this school. If it happened five years ago at the school before we got accreditation, then fantastic, you got away with it. Uh, those students got away with a lot more than you guys are going to be able to get away with because we're WASC accredited now, which means we can't, can't let that happen and knowingly let that happen is just a worse violation on top of that. It's bad for you, it's bad for us. So, Long story short, don't cheat. What does cheating mean? Copying and pasting off of the internet. I've seen practically every solution from the internet for every one of the assignments I've given for most of the classes that I've had here. So don't cut and paste and copy off the internet. The way that you write software programs and you're going to learn in this class is you open up a blank sheet and you start typing the code. <laughs> Just like you open up a blank word processing you know, document and you start typing your paper. Don't cut and paste. Don't copy by example. Some students, you know, they go to the Deedle and Deedle book, and I told you it's all examples. They'll cut and paste off of the website, and they'll put Deedle and Deedle, 1990, whatever. Don't reference plagiarized code either. The idea is you're supposed to be learning how to write the code. So write the code yourself, is what I'm saying. Uh, if two students are working together, write the code yourself. No two, there's no group assignments in this class. No group work. Everything is individual. Everyone has to turn in their own work. If you turn something in and it was your work, but five other people or you know a dozen other people turn in the same work, oh, they got it somehow, you're still at fault. So keep it private. Don't share it. Don't put it out on a forum. Don't put it, don't give it to your friend because they need help, which is the classic example. In fact, you'll get this, you'll get emails from people you don't even know from class distribution list. They'll say, you know, hey, uh, you got a sample solution, I'm having problems with this. And you give them something, you show them something, and then lo and behold, they turn it in as their work. And then you're not going to get any credit for it either. So we don't ask who the originator is and who the copiers are. It doesn't really matter. Don't get any credit for it. Enough said on that one. Okay, so grading formula. Uh, there's no such thing as an A+. plus. You're not going to get an A+, plus in this class. The highest score you can get is an A in the class. And hopefully, if you do your own work, you'll get an A in the class. I'm not a hard grader. Uh, and I'll tell you that right now because it encourages you to try and do your own work. If you don't do your own work, you're going to get an F in the class. If you do your own work, you're going to get a B or an A in the class, depending upon how much of the own work you turn in and how good it is, whether it's the right assignment, <laughs> meets the requirements, all the normal grading stuff that goes on in a regular old class. But what I'm saying is that it's to your advantage to do your own work, even if you think it's substandard. This is the first programming class you've taken. You don't know anything about programming. And try it. Do it yourself. Even if it's broken and full of errors, it's worth an A. If it's perfectly, flawlessly done, but it's not yours, it's not worth any credit at all. So don't worry about making it work. All right, so let's see, take a look down here. Uh, we've got the uh, class schedule. So this is uh, broken out into weeks, actually, 
and uh, the rest of this is kind of weird, oddly formatted, but we'll just take a look at this here. This is what we're going to do in the classes, subject by subject, where it says chapter. This is out of the book, the Dale Worms book that's in, mentioned in the syllabus and also in the MS, which is a different book than the Deedle and Deedle book. The Dale Worms book is a higher level. Um, it's not as basic as Deedle and Deedle. So if you're brand new to programming, Deedle and Deedle is the way to go. If you already know about C++ and you want to really focus on object orientation, this book is better. It's higher level. So we're going to start actually with Chapter 11. Uh, this weekend, we're going to do Weeks 1 and 2, probably get through 3 and 4. The class is broken out into three weekends, so we're going to try and push through about, well, Let's see, we got a third of this to go through. So we're probably, I'm probably going to get through arrays, and I'm probably going to get through stat, uh, through classes and through structures. Uh, you're going to want to use structures. Uh, in fact, we used structures in the Objective-C class, actually. You're going to want to use stru structures and uh, arrays a lot, arrays of objects, objects. So it's not like array, here's an array. It's arrays of objects, and there is a relationship with objects and being able to put different objects all into one array and to use them and so it's, it's a bit higher it's a more advanced than the simple you know array concept but uh, that's probably as far as we're going to get for the first week and the second weekend we're going to go through uh, pointers uh, using pointers with objects uh, using new and delete uh, constructors deconstructors copy constructors actually we'll hit constructors this weekend um, and we'll probably start in with overloading and overriding and complementing constructors, but we're probably not going to hit a lot of the multiple use of constructors through inheritance until the second weekend. If you're familiar with C++, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, you're going, what? You don't worry about it. You don't have to know any of these topics. Uh, but I'm just giving you the layout of what we're probably going to be covering uh, for each one of the weekends. Around here, we'll do uh, pointers and the to midterm take home. Reference types, uh, I really want to hit pointers because I want to look at linked lists. And some people who have taken Java have never seen pointers before. So if you're a Java programmer, pointers will be an interesting concept for you. Um, linked lists. And then once we get into linked list, then we get into trees. It's not a, da not a complete data structure, of course, but a tree structure, especially a binary tree structure, is just like a doubly linked list in a lot of ways. Don't worry if you don't know about linked lists right now. But linked lists are all dynamic memory allocation. Uh, so we'll talk about linked lists, linked structures. All throughout all of these topics we'll be enforcing uh, object oriented design principles and object orientation which is how the object oriented part of this comes out. You can't just teach object orientation without teaching programming because it just doesn't work that way. So as we go through you'll learn the object oriented concepts. Towards the end of the course we'll hit a little concept called recursion uh, not recursive functions, but mostly recursive methods and classes that work with recursion, uh, as well as functions, but uh, we'll take it a little bit further into the C++ range. But that's what the class is going to be about, and I usually at the first break I get like half a dozen people come up to me, I don't have any programming experience. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're going to start with Hello World in a few minutes. <laughs> don't worry about your programming experience is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, because you'll learn everything you need to know in this class. Questions about the syllabus? Um, the, the yeah. Syllabus on, uh, your website yeah. is not exactly the same as this. It's not the same. I, that's where I got it from, and I just downloaded it earlier today, actually. It's uh, this one here, of course, syllabus. It's this one is in a word format. I'm going to save it again. Let's see. It might be that. Uh, it's similar, but not exactly. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, what what were the, some of the differences? It's um, in a text edit. It looks different. Are you talking about the format or no, no, no. the content? Here's the one I just downloaded. Oh, okay. Let me take a look. It, it's possible that I have the wrong version, but let's just take a look. This is nine oh nine. Yeah, very good. Uh, oh, you have the wrong syllabus, probably. Uh, 909 is uh, object-oriented programming in C++. Um, this, no, the 
one was after his. It was something that happened. It was nine months. It was principles of object uh, object oriented system. Oh, that's principles of, um, that's the different course. Uh, what you're looking at is uh, oh, yeah. this one here. What you want to go down is to this one, and you'll see the 909. Yeah. That's why you're seeing operating systems instead of C++. It's a slightly different topic. <laughs> no, no, that's good, because I like people to tell me that, because sometimes there is an inconsistency. Last time I taught this course, I think I taught it over a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I had to reformat the syllabus, so I was concerned, actually, when you mentioned that. I thought maybe I had the old syllabus up there. So that's good. Any uh, other questions on the syllabus? Then uh, turn your computers on and get everything ready because we're going to start installing software. And uh, I'm going to record this as a separate video uh, so I can dissect out these topics. So I'm going to stop this recording unless we have comments about the course itself or the syllabus or what's going to happen to the course. No? Okay, good. Let's stop the, uh, stop the calendar.